In the previous lecture, we discussed a particle found inside a finite potential well. So we were basically able to determine the wave functions that describe the motion of our particle inside that finite potential well. So in this lecture, we're going to summarize the results we obtained as well as discuss some of the implications of the particle in the finite potential well. So let's begin by recalling what a particle inside a finite potential well is. So basically the potential well is a box and the box has two walls. So we have the left wall of the box and the right wall of the box. And this finite quantity simply means that the height of our two walls is finite and it's equal to U0 where U0 represents the potential energy that any particle would have if the particle is found outside of our potential well outside of our box. So the left side of the box is found at the position x0 along the x-axis and the right side of that box, the right wall of the box, is found at the position x equals L. So basically, we break down the following region into three different regions. So region 1 corresponds to everything found to the left of the position x equals zero. Region two corresponds to inside our potential well inside our box, while region three corresponds to the region to the right of the position x equals L. So basically, we take a particle with the mass m, for example, an electron, and we place it inside the finite potential well. So this basically means if the particle is found inside our well, inside the box, the potential energy will be zero. But if the uh, particle somehow makes its way outside, the potential energy will increase to U0. Now, we begin by making the assumption that the energy of that particle, for example, an electron that we place inside our potential well given by E is less than the energy U0 that the particle would have if the particle makes its way outside. Now, notice the particle only moves along the following horizontal axis, along the bottom of the following box, and the particle particle cannot actually jump as so outside of our box. So basically, according to classical mechanics, because of these two walls, which serve as physical barriers, the electron, the particle, as it moves back and forth, should not be able to make its way outside because not only of this physical barrier, but also because if the particle does in fact make it outside, its potential energy would be greater than its actual total energy E, which would imply that energy is not conserved. So basically, if we're dealing with classical mechanics, this particle, if placed inside our finite potential well, should not be able to make it outside to region 1 or region 3. So basically, the question that we want to explore is, if the particle is placed into the well, can it ever be found in region 1 or region 3 according to quantum mechanics? So in this lecture, we're going to recall the information we spoke about in the previous lecture. So previously, we were able to show the following three wave functions. So the wave function that describes the motion of our particle when that particle is found within region 2 inside the box is given given by this equation where a and b are simply two constants. Now equation given by this formula describes our wave function of the motion of the particle if the particle is found in region 1. And region 3 is described by this wave function. So basically, if we take each one of these wave functions and we plot it along the x, y plane as shown, we get the following result. So, 
plotting these equations gives us one long continuous wave function as shown in the following diagram using the following purple curve. So notice this dashed line represents the minimum quantity of energy that the particle has. Now this energy of course is given by E and notice this energy is less than the potential energy U naught that the particle would have if the particle is found outside the box in regions I or regions 3I or region 1 or region 3. So basically we're making the assumption that the quantum number of our particle is given by N1. So these equations represent the graph for quantum number N equals 1. So, the question is, what exactly does this graph actually tell us about the ability of our particle to exist in region 1 or region 3? So, notice that outside the two walls of the finite box, we see that the wave function decreases exponentially. So it decreases as shown. But notice that unlike in the case of the infinite potential well, we see that the probability of, the, of finding our particle outside the walls is not equal to zero. So in fact, if we go slightly outside the wall, for example, at this location, we see that the probability is not exactly equal to zero. Likewise, if we go to this side, we see that the wave function does not go to zero. Now, if we plot the square of the absolute value of the wave function that gives us the following curve and notice that the area underneath the curve from some position initial to some final position gives us the probability of finding our particle in that region. So basically, these two shaded regions represent the probability of finding the particle outside of our box. So that basically means, even though classic me uh, classical mechanics tells us that it is impossible that the particle would be found outside, quantum mechanics tells us that this is not so. So basically, according to classical mechanics, the particle cannot exist in regions outside the box because at these points, the potential energy of that particle will be greater than the initial total energy that the particle began with. And not only that, classical mechanics tells us that because of these two barriers, that electron, that particle, would not be able to make it to the region outside the box but quantum mechanics tells us a different story according to quantum mechanics there is some probability that the particle can in fact penetrate through those physical barriers through those walls and escape to the outside region even if the potential energy will be greater than the total energy of that particle, even if energy is not momentarily conserved. So what exactly can we conclude? So basically, quantum mechanics tells us that the particle can in fact momentarily penetrate the walls and exist in the outside regions, outside our potential well, outside our box. And this implies, of course, that in quantum mechanics, when that particle exists outside our wall, energy is not conserved. The question is, how exactly can we explain this idea that energy is not conserved for a certain amount of time when that particle exists outside our box? So this can be readily explained using the uncertainty principle that relates energy and time. So basically, the uncertainty principle tells us that our particle can in fact exist outside for a certain amount of time given by delta t and at that time energy will not be conserved. There will be a certain amount of uncertainty in energy given by delta e.